All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode five of Star Trek Mata Hari. I know it's been a while, but we're finally back to our every other week schedule. Knock on wood. Uh, for those who are unfamiliar or need a refresher, Mata Hari is a tabletop role playing game that uses the Star Trek Adventures rule set. We are set in the year 2412 aboard an Eclipse class in the Shackleton Expanse. We're in the same canon, quote unquote, as my Fenrir and Groundskeeper games. Now, you don't need to have watched either of those to enjoy Mata Hari, but you're probably going to catch a few references and nods if you do. You can catch the VODs for pretty much everything that I run on my YouTube and most of the popular podcast solutions. Other than that, I don't really have any announcements this week, so let's just go around and have everyone introduce themselves, introduce new characters, and, you know, do that lovely jazz. Uh, so let's start with the captain. Hello, I am Charles, also known as Dare Wolf Online. I am playing Frederick O'Connor, the captain. All right, up next is Mr. Jaro. Hey, my name's Mikhail. Uh, I play Commander Jaro Rian, the, um, the Joran First Officer. And then we have Mr. Prawl. Hi, I'm Alex. I play Lieutenant Commander Prawl. He is the Matahari's intelligence officer. And then we have Mr. Jensen. I'm Jeff. I'm playing uh, Ms. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Jensen, uh, the science officer. And last but not least, Mr. Toleip. I'm Brian. I'm playing Lieutenant Commander Toleip, the chief engineer. Very nice. And with that, let's go ahead and run our introduction. And welcome back. So something I like doing with all of my games is have the players do an opening monologue. And today that's going to come in the form of a captain's log from Captain O'Connor. So take it away. Thank you very much. Uh, captain's log, Stardate 89001.2. After, after an encounter with a giant solar computer and its creators, the Matahari and its crew returned to Narendra Station to part with one of our senior staff, Lieutenant Commander Jennings. I cannot say that I'm surprised at his request for a transfer. I believe the stress and conflict, both with the previous captain's deception, as well as facing, once again, the possibility of death and utter annihilation, drove him to a point where he could not return from. While I am sad to see him go, though, I understand his decision. His replacement, however, Commander Zenosa, has been performing beyond expectations. I believe she will fit in well, and having a new face among the crew, someone that does not remind them of the past and the pain they've suffered will help in the growing process. I still intend to take time with each of the senior staff. Um, Starfleet Command still has an provisional status, but the further away from the events that they put us, as well as the congealing of the new crew, Starfleet and the crew will feel better about our mission. Our current mission finds us back at the Shackleton Expanse. We've just detected an anomaly that if it proves true, will change forever what we know about how the universe works. Tonight, we are meeting at midnight. Some time to get to know, know the crew better, I hope. I was, I was vomiting over my words. Sorry. <laughs> ah, you're fine. And very nice. So we are going to cut to the quote unquote nightclub slash intelligence briefing room of midnight aboard the Mata Hari. And just like last time, it is a bumping affair. Uh, which is, uh, you know, it, it's almost like you're on a, a star base with how expansive and how everything is decorated. Of course, you've got the blues and the neon pinks and, you know, all the sort of retro wave style going on here. 
Um, there are other officers here besides yourselves, but pretty much everyone from the senior staff is at a singular table, uh, including your new security officer, Lieutenant Commander Zonsa. And uh, I thought we'd start there and uh, see what happens. So take it away. I raise a glass up. Um, I'd just like to propose a toast to our new Chief of Security and Tactical Officer. Uh, I do believe that you will be an excellent addition to the crew. And I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you for joining us and give you a moment to tell us a little bit about yourself. I raise the glass up, knock back a drink. Yeah. So, of course, you know, Zonsa does the same thing. And uh, she says, uh, well, to uh, be frank, Captain, uh, I don't know where to begin. Uh, I have a very colored history, as it were. Well, begin at the beginning and tell us how you came to be among us. Well, uh, are you familiar with a little-known planet known as Cardassia? I am indeed, of course. Well, ironically enough, I was born there, which was interesting because this was at the height of the Dominion War. Now, you might be thinking, how did I end up here if I was born on Cardassia? Let's just say my mother and father were um, political prisoners, political guests of the Cardassian Union at the time. Well, we're glad to have you among us. With that being said, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about our mission uh, and where we're heading currently. It's a little difficult with the uh, pounding music, but if we all just kind of nod along with it, I think we'll be fine. So Starfleet Command has ordered us into the Shackleton Expanse to analyze, investigate an anomaly. Um, it has tachyon, I don't know how to describe it exactly, but it's showing tachyon pulses or something like that. If this is a natural occurring anomaly, this could change the entire understanding of the universe for us. So something very exciting. And our chief science officer, I think this is going to be perhaps a career changing opportunity for you. Very possible, depending on what we can find uh, in the nature of this pulse. Mm -hmm. I would like you to begin preparations on a class three probe I want us, as soon as we get there and we're within scanning range, to launch that ahead. I want to start gathering as much information as is possible. Um, the more we know before we actually get too close to it, I think will be the better. Do you concur? Uh, absolutely, sir. Excellent. Excellent. Happen. Excellent. First officer, um, anything to add? Any thoughts, preparations we should be making? Well, I'm uh, not as well versed on the implications of this uh, of this scientific scientific discovery, mm -hmm. at, at the very least, it would be interesting for me to know, you know, what 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 implications of this discovery would there be for for our knowledge of, of how things work. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. And then, Prol, I wanted to ask you, if I may. Um, what do we know about this area of the Shackleton Expanse? Any known trade routes? Um, any, you know, any intelligence that you can provide to us about what we may run into, or is this a relatively unknown section of space? Well, Prawl, if you'd like to do a roll, that's going to be an insight security difficulty of zero. All right, I will do that. And you will have a focus. Yay, momentum. <laughs> also, side note why he's doing that, Jensen, you are coming in a little bit quieter than everybody else. just all right Oof. so you're going to get three momentum there and Paul, what you know is that uh there are not a whole lot of things going on in this area of space i mean there's a few you know sort of quote-unquote standard systems where you've got a star and a few class d moons or class j gas giants um nothing really sentient in the area at least as far as you know um Interestingly, though, because you got three successes, I'll give this to you free. Um, you are noticing that there are sort of signs of the Voth, if you remember who the Voth are from Voyager. From the few intelligence dockets that I have, this area of space is, for lack of better terms, relatively barren. Mm -hmm. There has been supposed sightings of Voth ships, though. I'm not as familiar with the Voth. Um, what can you tell me about them? Their capabilities, their disposition? Are these, you know, 
are these a species that we should be concerned about? Are they hostile? Um, what can you tell me? From what I remember, because it's been a while since I've looked anything up about the Voth, they are native to the Delta Quadrant. Delta Quadrant? What would they be doing in the Beta Quadrant? That's 70,000 light years away. Are we supposing then that the Tachyon emissions are part of a transwarp conduit then? That is definitely I, a possibility. I wouldn't rule that possibility out. And if that's the case, we Ooh, might want to technology. be prepared. <laughs> I, I think that would might answer my question as to why this is this is important. Um, I mean, that sort of that sort of technology would be would be a revelation. Well, Commander, don't get too excited. There are several other possibilities for taking on the missions. Fair enough. Could, could be a clocked ship. Could simply be a natural phenomenon. Our science officer would probably be able to speak to more about what that would mean. Commander yeah, Tola, I would like you to work closely with uh, Jensen on this. I want to make sure that we have in place um, some sort of protective barrier. If we need to modulate the shields, I just want to make sure the ship is protected from any sort of tachyon emissions. So I'd like you two to begin work on that. We're still a good week or so out from getting to this anomaly. Um, so I'd like you to begin work on that immediately um, and any sort of protection. And then first officer, um, as well as crawl, I'd like you guys to do as much research as you can um, into this, the box. And I wanna know as much as we can about them, um, any sort of data we have, um, customs, et cetera. If we run into them, I want to be very prepared uh, for a peaceful and non-confrontational um, encounter. Be happy to help. I can take a look and see what we have in intelligence. From what I remember, most of what we have came back from Voyager. Gather as much as you can. Does anyone else have any other questions? No, sir. Well, I'm going to go get another okay. round then. All right. So we're going to sort of have this open area for RP. So if anyone has a scene they want to accomplish during this week transit, uh, just sort of speak up. Otherwise, we will skip ahead to you arriving at the uh, anomaly. So does anyone have any scenes they'd like to accomplish between point A and point B? Why don't you guys each take a moment to do a little RP to like maybe gain some more momentum and work on the two projects? Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Yeah. Well, if you wanted to, to do a little a little scene of uh, us us looking through the records. Hell yeah. Okay. So let's yeah. uh let's start with the whole probe affair in the science lab. Uh cool. obviously Jensen, you're there. Yep. Uh who else there would be there with Mr. Jensen? I would assume maybe Tola. All right, we'll throw Tola up in there. All right. Anybody else wish to be present? Nope. All righty. So to lay up in Jensen, uh, you two are more or less reconfiguring a probe to suit your purposes. And what you're noticing is that something's off about this probe when you open it up. And I would like Jensen to roll me an insight science. To lay up, you would be doing an insight engineering, and you are assisting each other, so decide who among you is doing the actual role um, and who's assisting. Uh, Ooh, this my is insight is not great. My Fine. insight is really good, so... <laughs> I'll assist you. you. Uh, the difficulty here will be a two. A two. Uh, all right. Uh, would I have a focus? I have sensor operations and computers. I would give you the sensor operations because this is cool. a probe. Uh, fusion cool. reactors? Uh, no, fusion reactors would not apply here. And not computers? Not computers. Well, well, I could see computers working. All right, then. All right. All right, so that's... A conditional uh, success. It's a good start. One success. All right, three successes, which means you guys get one momentum. You guys are up to four. The reason it's odd and the reason this is noticeable is that it's almost like someone took out the sort of inner workings of a photon torpedo and put it into a probe. Mm -hmm. And now that you're noticing this, to lay up, you very carefully reach in and pull out what is 
potentially the warhead of a photon torpedo and you sort of hold it up very gingerly and then even without you doing anything it cracks open and like paper mache it just cracks open and inside there is a little banner note that says ha gotcha to lay up jennings no <laughs> <laughs> well, that was exciting. Very. I tell you that Jennings, he had an odd sense of humor. I liked him. Yeah. <laughs> he had his moments. Um, so uh, I think we need to ensure that the probe is not going to be damaged by the tachyon particles as well. Standard probes may not have the right shielding. Yes. So, you would know more about adjusting the shield frequencies than I would. I can't imagine this would be more than a slight uh, extension of the primary mm -hmm. subspace conversion relays. Very good. Uh... Uh, I'm going to make the appropriate sensor modifications. Okay. And I will modify the shields. All right. I would say since you're at four momentum, no roll is required. You manage to correctly modify the probe. Excellent. All right. And we're going to transition from here to Prawl's office, where you and Mr. Jaro are working on what you guys can find out about the Voth. All right, so there's Jaro, there's Prawl. All right, so out of character, let me ask this. Uh, do you guys remember what's going on with the Voth, or should I give you sort of a rundown primer? I think I need a reminder. Yeah. Okay. So uh, no role required again. Um, basically, what's going on with the Voth is the Voth were actually the dinosaurs on Earth that escaped the big asteroid that hit the planet and they went all the way out to the delta quadrant and that was the whole point of the episode in voyager like oh god we're actually all from earth this entire time kind of a thing um but the voth have transwarp they have essentially qsd um they are highly advanced they have ships that are the size of new york island so they are highly advanced way beyond what the Federation could do. Um, in terms of relationship with the Federation, I would say they are not exactly great, but also not exactly bad. They aren't afraid of shooting at you, is what I would say. And that's what I can give you without a roll. So from the reports I've pulled up so far, our standing with the Voth isn't exactly the best, but it's not the worst. We should expect that they, if they're not happy to see us, we are going to come under fire. And if we were to come under fire, is there anything we could do to prepare to make that if not a winnable fight, at least a survivable one. If we have our QSD ready and primed, we could try to jump away as quick as possible. Do, do we know whether or not they could they can penetrate our cloaking systems? I would say that would be a role. Uh, that would be a reason and a security. And uh, difficulty on this would be a three, and you can't assist each other. All right. I would I would ask Prowl to take the lead on that and on that research, and I'd be helping out. I will take the lead on that. You said reason and security. You got it. What was the difficulty? Difficulty is three. Everyone good if I buy an extra die with our momentum? Please. Go for it. Would investigation be a focus? I'd give it to you, yeah. 
I have that one. Oh, All right, that's right. two conditional successes. All right, so you get the three successes, but there's a complication. I'm going to take threat for that complication. So the answer to your question is no, they are not able to penetrate your cloak. All right, so we should plan to avoid that confrontation if at all possible. I would agree with that. By the way, Lieutenant Prowl, uh, Lieutenant Commander Prowl, our new security officer, she was a political, she was born a political prisoner on Cardassia. Would you happen to know anything about that? Are you asking me this because I'm Cardassian or is there another reason, sir? Well, because you seem like the type who would do your homework on anyone who uh, anyone who is who is joining. I would just like to remind you, I was only born myself the, in the years prior to the Dominion War. But I did take a look into the Lieutenant Commander's history. I don't need to know. I'm just, I, maybe I'm too paranoid now after what happened with the last captain. I just was wondering whether there was anything we would need to be concerned about. I don't trust Starfleet's Betty. With the last few weeks, I can't say I blame you on that. I didn't see anything that stood out as being needed to be brought to attention. Thank, thank you. And I'm sorry that I put you on the spot for being Cardassian. I've gotten used to it, sir. It's what I had all throughout the academy. It's what I've had on every posting. Everyone sees the ridges. They see my forehead. They know it's what I'm used to. It's it hasn't been easy for me, and I don't think it helps that we are often on opposing sides on decisions, but I'm trying my best. I'm not taking it personal. Thank you. And thank you for your work on this uh, boss situation. Well, if I didn't do it, who else would? <laughs> Fair enough. All right. And I think that's an excellent way to bookend that scene. Uh, anybody else want to accomplish anything between point A and point B, or are we going to skip ahead a little bit? Let's skip ahead. I think skip. that gets everything done we want to done, yeah. All righty. We will skip ahead to about six days and 23 hours later, where you have arrived in the area of space where the tachyons have been detected. And uh, all of you are present in the CIC. You're all at your uh, respective stations. Of course, you've got Ensign Raven at NAV. You've got Zonsa over at Tactical. To lay up, you're over at Engineering. Prawl, you're at the uh, Secondary Science. Jensen, you're at Primary Science. And then you have Jaro and the Captain at the center table. Um, however, as you guys enter into this area of space, uh, you immediately detect another sort of burst of tachyons. And uh, Mr. Jensen, I'd like you to roll me a reason science, and the ship will assist you with a sensor science. The difficulty on this is just a one. Cool. Uh, All right, so no help from the ship. All right. Uh, sensor operations focus. Oh, yeah. All right, so you are up to, let's see, three successes, two momentum. You're up to five momentum by my count. And yeah, uh, what you find, Jensen, 
is the following. I'm going to give you access to a handout, which you may deliver appropriately. Uh, so essentially, we're we are detecting a tachyon black hole, um, a black hole so dense that tachyons can't escape it, and uh, we would probably not be able to escape either. Uh, recommend keeping a very safe distance. Wait. So my understanding was that one of the only things that could escape and what makes transwarp technology so powerful is the fact that tachyons cannot be disrupted by a singularity. If you're telling me right now that this singularity is so large or dense that even tachyons can't escape from it? Correct, sir. All right, let's maintain minimum long range distance. I do not want to get close to this thing, but let's launch the probe. And then I'd like to go to yellow alert and let's keep constant long-range scans for any signs of the Vox. Yeah, we Captain may have suggest deploying a communication buoy so that if the probe is absorbed by the singularity, it can transmit its findings back to the, the communication buoy, which we will be able to retrieve. That is an excellent idea, Commander Tola. Let's get it done. Yeah. All right. So, of course, you send off the probe, you deploy a communications buoy, um, so my question is in relation to this probe, are you going to send it directly at the anomaly? Or are you going to send it sort of a slingshot uh, way? Because even with a, a regular black hole, you know, until you fall into the event horizon, you're fine. It's once you pass that threshold that you can't escape. So do you want to slingshot around? Do you want to send it straight in? What, which way is the probe going at this point? Uh, I would recommend a, a slingshot first, and then we could, if we need to, direct the probe inside. But let's get a full spectrum like scan. Around yeah. And then Distance. have it slowly descend in? Yes. Kind of like, you know, the water sinking down the drain, gotcha. essentially. And then that way we can get and open up to full spectrum scans, so that way we can get as much data as possible. Gotcha. Excellent idea. So uh, let's have uh, Jensen, let's have you roll a control in science, uh, difficulty of two to properly control this probe. All right. And I tell you what, the Matahari can assist you with a computers in science. All right. She's a good ship. Wow, very nice. Um, that is a grand total of five successes, which means uh, not only are you capped at six momentum, but you have two floating, which you could spend on additional questions, creating an advantage, things of that nature. So uh, what would you like to do with that floating? Uh, well, I personally want to know what could potentially make up a black hole so dense that tachyons can't even escape. Mm hmm. Um, I'm going to count that as your free science officer question, and the answer to that is you don't know. There, This is something completely new, and for tachyons to be caught in this manner, as the captain said originally during his opening log, it could very well change how you understand the universe. So, an undiscovered element. Hmm. Uh, so, yeah, uh, and then... Anyone else have suggestions for questions that we might want to ask? For our, could we use one of those momentum? And this is obviously your momentum to spend, but I would think if we could use one of those momentum in a, like a future role to create advantage on gathering more data from the black hole. So if there's like a difficulty check for that, we could, you know, lower it by one. That might be a good use of one of those. I, I, I think that's an excellent idea. We probably also want to know whether this is a naturally occurring phenomena or whether oh, yeah. it looks like it's artificial. That's a good, thank that's you. A question. Can we ask that? That's good. You that's, certainly that's can. A very good question. The best you can tell as the probe sort of begins circling around this anomaly, best you can tell is that this is a naturally occurring phenomenon. But again, you're sort of questioning 
what the hell is more dense than a supernova? Because that's usually how black holes form is a star, you know, gets too big and explodes violently and turns into a black hole. Mm -hmm. What exploded? What detonated to make something this dense? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we if there's a way to extract any of this so for further analysis would be fantastic, but we need to come up with a solution. How big is it? Like... Like a black hole is usually the size of, like it, it, it's 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 its size is usually correlated to the size of whatever exploded. So like a larger star would create a larger black hole, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. How big is it? Can we extrapolate out some like logical conclusions of what could be this big based on its current size and density? You can, and I actually have to Google this because I didn't put it in my notes. But there's a certain class of star. Um, that is tremendously here we go so if you're familiar with ui scuddy um it is a hyper giant that has a radius that is 1.7 k times larger than the sun and it is it is the biggest star that we know in the universe in real life right now so something of that size not big enough. You're looking at something twice the mass of that in order to make something this dense. Oh wait, so like our sun looks like a like a peanut compared to the size of the of the U U Y Scuddy. Is that Not correct? even a peanut, like a really... little pinprick, like a pixel on the screen. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's seventeen hundred times larger than our sun. <sighs> And oh we need something God. twice the size of that to make this dense of a black hole. Is so we know of no naturally occurring phenomenon that, well, this appears natural, but we know of no natural, like, as, as well, far as we know in the universe, of a sun or star, something this large. Right. I Like, this is the kind of star that would be even brighter than the North Star on Earth. Like, you would have seen this star. So the, the fact that there's no record of it indicates that we don't know we have no idea what would cause this. So I've got a question. Mm -hmm. um, in any of the records that we looked through dealing with the Voth, does any of that tell how their ships are powered? Um, it does. Uh, they, of course, have transwarp capability and pretty much advanced propulsion systems. But they still, to the best of my knowledge, they still rely on matter-antimatter reaction. So not something that could go catastrophic and cause this. Correct. Commander Jennings, uh, could we scan for uh, temporal anomalies? Could this uh, reaction be happening backwards in time? Uh, given the volume of tachyon particles, I wondered whether there are any chronotons. And what I would say is uh, I'll give that to you free. No chronotons. Seems to be just a standard anomaly. Well, as standard as this kind of thing can be, anyway. <laughs> but, Mr. Tuleip, I'd like you to roll me a insight engineering, please, as you notice something on your engineering display, something happening with the ship. And if you have I Know My Ship, the difficulty will come down from a 2 to a 1. Uh, I don't. I got rid of... No, no, I didn't pick up. I got there on my ship. Unfortunately, I don't even think I have a focus on this one. Let's spend uh, some amount work field thought. dynamics as a uh, focus. No, but I would give you nope. computers. All right, excellent. And, and we have all the momentum you could possibly want. So <laughs> I'd say spend it. Spend one we, at least. Get three die. I mean, we we have we have max momentum. Sure. Yeah. All right. I'll spend one. You got it. Wow. Right. Wow. Oh my God. <laughs> hey, wow. Did you remember that game where I almost died? Yeah, I stored up a bunch of luck for this game, apparently. Wow. Oh <laughs> that is uh, six successes, which means not only are you capped on momentum again, but you have three floating momentum to ask additional questions. Uh, um, so what you learn initially before any questions is that Mr. Tuleyup you're noticing that one of the bio neural gel packs on the bridge is being modified or otherwise 
converting itself into something. And I'm going to give you access to your own handout. Ooh. <laughs> and uh, it is a bit of a doozy. See, is this the start of our ship trying to start killing us again? <laughs> <laughs> Not again. Uh, Captain? Yes, One of our bioneural gel packs is being converted into a cryo-arithmetic engine. I'm sorry, what? It, so it's a theoretical type of quantum computer that uh, leads to a violation of the second law of thermodynamics. It gets colder instead of hotter as it functions. Hmm. Uh, is it dangerous? Uh, not by itself, although... It's a violation of entropy, which means it shouldn't be possible. Uh, we were, uh, Commander we... Jennings, I'm going to, or uh, Jensen, I'm going to forward some results to your panel. Oh, excellent. Yep, and I'll give Jensen access to the handout. There you go. Okay. I'd like to raise shields. Okay. And, you know, we'll maintain yellow alert until we can figure out what's going on with this. Okay. Could we also lock down the brig? The bridge or the brig? The brig. Where you you said it was forming in the brig? In the no, bridge. No, the, in the oh, bridge. It's forming in the bridge. Yes, oh. like uh, literally, like you could open up a panel on the bridge and you could pull out the bioneural gel pack in question. If we can figure out how to use this, it would revolutionize Federation technology. Let's first figure out why it's happening, and then we can determine how to use it from there. I so I was gonna say, were we able to get any kind of maybe some kind of actual analysis of the molecules that are making up this black hole that we can actually analyze? I would say you've got three floating momentum, so if you want to make that a question, because I think I think getting it into Uh oh, he froze. Oh no. Uh oh. Did we lose him? I think we lost him. Oh, oh no. Oh, he nope, he's back. I, I, I could hear all you, but I don't know what happened. <laughs> Anyways, right, you were uh, saying. Ask your question again. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, we just want to be able to get uh, some analysis, some computer readouts of this molecule into the computer so we can run some detailed analysis to try and break it down and to see what it is and run some tests on it so uh spending one of your free momentum one of your floating momentum what i would say is that for 0. 0.000 etc cetera, etc cetera, all the way down to an attosecond which is a extremely small amount of time one of the tachyon bursts coming off of the black hole actually passed through your shields and impacted the uh the bio neural gel pack in question so this is an entirely almost purely by chance change in the bio neural mm -hmm. gel pack uh Jethan, i'd like to take that gel pack down to the science lab and run some actual tests on it to see what's going on inside and maybe run it through some now some of the computer analysis and the testing equipment down there let me call Mr. Malkovich to bring up a replacement. Yeah, is there any danger? I'll have to engineer. Well, we can... Captain? Uh, Mr. Malkovich, can you bring a spare biopack to the bridge, please? Uh, yes, sir. Do you want a good one or a bad one? I mean, obviously a good one. Also, maybe don't mention bad ones on open <laughs> communication. Thank you. Uh, Nothing to worry about, new captain. And uh, Captain, we can absolutely uh, we'll we'll uh, put up a, a level two quarantine around the science labs just to make sure there's no danger to any other sections of the ship. And I don't want anyone handling it directly. You know, make sure you have a containment container in place, and let's get some biohazard suits. Um, just I want to protect anyone from you know direct contact with this. Absolutely. Uh, I'll yeah. Uh, so uh, Commander Jensen to the science lab. Let's prep a, prep a quarantine in the radiation suits and uh, uh, send a couple of uh, crew members up in radiation to 
escort the gel pack down to the science lab. And uh, of course, as they begin preparing that, uh, Zonsa speaks up and says, um, well, apparently this is uh, a hotbed of uh, occurrences because I've got two Voth ships heading on a direct course to us on long range scans. Captain, can I recommend we drop into Cloak immediately? I was thinking the same thing. Lower shields, bring us into Cloak. Oof. Captain, if we lower shields, that opens us to any effects from the Tekions. It appears that they already passed through the shields uh, when they affected it. So at this point, it doesn't appear shields are actually protecting us. Well, if I boost the trifold plasma invariants, I might be able to raise the power on the shields. But if you put us into Cloak, we've got nothing. At this point, I'm more worried about the Vox than I am about these Tachyon pulses. See, the Between two Voth ships coming at us, they'll overload our shields in short order anyway. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Prawl. Let's uh, bring on the Cloak. Lower shields, take us into Cloak. All right, so Blue Alert begins to sound as the ship enters into Cloak. And it's almost like silent running, where it feels like even if you dropped a hyperspanner that, you know, someone would hear it. But it's sort of that uh, submarine type feel where um, everything's very quiet, everything's very silent running, as it were. May I suggest if the Voth are headed towards us, perhaps we move the ship so the invisible ship is not sitting where the visible ship was. Absolutely. And uh, well, Zosa we're... speaks up again. What if we neared the event horizon, sir? Maybe we could disguise ourselves with the accretion disk. I would prefer not to get close to the uh, to the singularity at this point. Um, take us on a circumference, like basically take us on like a like a roundabout, just skirt the edge of how far we are from it, but take us just you know around the outside of the edge, but maintain the same distance from the singularity at this point. And uh, Ensign Raven says, "I, sir, circumnavigating the anomaly now," and you would see. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I that think all you had something. Yes. Oh, Captain, are you familiar with our guest from the Andromeda Galaxy? Nope. Well, sh we did find them shortly before, oh, not shortly, but a while before you took command. I'm curious if maybe Alethea would actually have any insight on what this is. Let's get her involved. Can you go meet with her, ask her some questions and see you know, what information you can gather and just report back to me? Yes, sir, I'll get on that. Thank you, great suggestion. All right. So uh, this is where we start to break out scenes again. So what would you guys like to do first? The analysis of the, the bioneural gel pack, analysis of your sensor data, you know, where would you like to start? A bioneural gel pack. Yeah. And let's say you'll do that in main engineering, because that's where all the lovely bits of equipment are. So, uh, obviously, Mr. Toleup, you are there. Uh, let's get Alethea there, because I think you're going to ask questions, Mr. Prawl, so you're there as well. Uh, Jensen, would you be there as well? Oh, yeah. Okay. And then, uh, anybody else care to be present for this? All right, we'll roll with those three. So, uh, of course, you guys follow quarantine procedure as you bring the bioneural gel pack down to main engineering. And in contrast to a, a normal bioneural gel pack where it's like a bright light inside with a quote unquote bunch of like random, neur almost neuron like connections, there's actual frost forming on the gel pack surface. And in fact, between when you take it out and bring it down to main engineering, it has dropped to maybe one Kelvin above absolute zero. So this thing is cold as hell. Actually, colder than hell, I should say. All right. Um, so I think we need to, to go ahead. I assume, Tolap, you have some centrifuges here. Uh, yes. Let's, let's go ahead and get extract a sample and run it through so we can do a spectrum analysis. And uh, that way we can compare it to what it used to be and see what may be affecting this gel pack. Certainly. 
All right. Uh, this is going to be either a reason science if Jensen does it, or a reason engineering if Taleb does it. Difficulty on this is going to be a five. And you are capped on momentum, just so you know. I have 11 reason and five science. I have 11 reason and five engineering. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I'm good either way. You know, uh, I'll assist you. I recommend we spend some momentum on this, though. Oh, for sure. <laughs> you also have determination. Don't forget. Okay. Uh, so, yes. Uh, and I, yeah. Okay, so we will do a reason science. And uh, how much momentum should I spend? Three, I three all of it? <laughs> oh, three would get me how many dice? Uh, four total. Four total. Uh, that, I think that should be okay. And that will get me do I have a focus? I have xenobiology, uh computers. I'll give it to you, yeah, because both of those would kind of come into play here. Okay, cool. Here goes nothing. Alright, so that's two successes only. So yeah. to lay up, let's let's see what your assist is, and then we'll think about how we can go for this. <laughs> All right. So, Jensen, your option here, if you want to try and pass this thing, mm -hmm. is you would have to spend determination to re-roll probably not just those zeros, but all of those dice. All four mm -hmm. dice. Uh, I think it's worth it, because I want to try and figure out what's going on here. So, it's a... Let's see if I can get a little Yeah, bit so better. the question is, which value would you be tapping for this? Uh, every problem has a solution. That'll work. <laughs> yeah still only two successes apparently not this time <laughs> so i think what happens is you run it through the spectrum analyzer and you look at the results and you go that's not possible is the spectrum analyzer broken kind of a thing <laughs> okay. you are literally seeing a something on how to how to phrase this properly this would be the equivalent of taking a microscope to a caveman and mm. showing the caveman something in the microscope like, that uh, is the level of technology disparity that you're seeing here. Uh, okay. Uh, so that didn't work. Um, let's see. Taleb, you got any other suggestions on this one? Because I'm stumped. Hmm. Uh, perhaps we expose it to a limited heat source and see whether that uh, changes the the composition? Uh, it's a great idea. Right, also, we... perhaps, Commander Prowl, you might uh, consult our guest? Yes. That's what I was thinking. And of course, Alethea has been here this entire time, watched you guys do this, and sort of says to you all, um, can't say I'm very familiar with, uh, you know, this, this type of biology, but, you know, I, I could take a look and, and see what I, I can discern, not to toot my own horn, but my people are very advanced when it comes to medical type situations. Yeah, this is something we, quite frankly, are in the dark about right now, so any help we can get would be greatly appreciated. Very well. Uh, so she actually goes to one of the samples you've pulled out of the bioneural gel pack, and she reaches through the quarantine field with her suit. Uh, obviously not breaching quarantine, so, you know, her hand passes through the force field and the force field maintains um, mm -hmm. but she touches the surface of the sample with her uh, gloved hand and you see sort of pinpricks of light form on the fingertips and she sort of does that for about a minute then pulls her hand back and you see that literal icicles come as she brings her fingers back and she sort of flicks the icicles off and says okay um how to put this i don't think that anomaly is from this universe oh goodness like a uh, parallel universe something like that yes where the rules are 
different. And whatever the anomaly did to this gel pack changed it so it could work in our reality. Okay. So the tachyons are making submolecular changes. Not even submolecular. We're talking subatomic. Um, this would rewrite the laws of physics as we know it. I'm going to call up to the bridge. This is the captain. We need to move to as safe of a distance away from this anomaly as we can, out of range of any tachyon bursts. We need to do it now. We don't have time to explain overcoms. Understood. Raven, maximum warp, take us away, directly away from the anomaly. All right, now let's be clear here. If you warp, uh, there is a chance the Voth might see you. There, are, there would be a roll on their part. Um, but if you move max impulse away, there's not going to be a roll. Like, you're still cloaked. You don't have to worry about it. It's when you go to warp under cloak that there's a chance they could see you. Uh, I'd suggest max impulse still a safe distance and then drop into warp. I like that. Max impulse still safe distance, and then we'll go into warp. Okay. So I will put us on this map. Uh, of course, we're not actually in combat yet. But uh, at this point, you guys are under cloak. Yeah. And you see that dropping out of uh, transwarp a bit of a distance away, uh, you do see that two Voth Palisades have exited transwarp. And they begin scanning the local area. And you guys are on the other side of the singularity from them. So which direction would you guys like to head? Basically, you would have to go to either the south edge or the eastern edge of this map to be able to warp away and remain undetected. I would say Command, south. Commander south. Prowl, do we really want to leave the system and allow the Voth to have whatever tactical advantage would be gained by gaining control of this singularity? Do we want to stay and risk another one of these tachyon bursts altering a more important system of our ship, such as the warp core. You see, again, I feel like I can shield the ship to a certain extent from these effects. If you would, would like not to while give, the cloaking field is up. If you would like to give this as an alternative to the captain, I've said what I believe would be the best course. You can give an alternative. Would there be a way to do internal shielding against the tachyon burst to protect these sensitive systems? The internal shields are not as robust as the external shields. I may be able to provide some protection to a few systems, but there would be no way to shield the entire ship. I could probably shield the warp core, probably primary life support, uh, I hesitate to say probably not the main computer. I may have ixnayed a few of the former security officers' ideas about shielding the main computer, which I admit I now regret a little. <laughs> uh, lay up to Captain. This is the captain. I wish to raise the idea that perhaps we do not leave the system and instead observe the Voth so that if they attempt to gain some sort of tactical advantage from control of the singularity, at least we are aware. How would you suggest you protect us from the tachyon admissions? Admittedly, the amount of the amount of protection I can offer while we remain cloaked is minimal. I can shield some primary systems, but otherwise the entire ship will be open to tachyon corruption, for lack of a better term. Commander Jaro, what are your suggestions? As worried as I am about the Voth getting a tactical advantage here, I'm just I'm not reassured by by uh by by Deleb, uh Deleb's ability to shield only a few of our systems we we don't know what would happen if if that tachyon pulse had hit hit something else 
uh, it wasn't it wasn't a um, it wasn't a, a vital system that it hit the group uh, uh, apparently uh, crazy and foreseen thing that it did, which means it's it's completely unpredictable. Even if we shield our major systems, it could hit something else and create an effect that's incredibly dangerous. I would 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 suggest retreating, but it's up to you. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Jensen, do we know the full range of how far these bursts go? Uh, would we have gotten that in our initial scans? Well, you know that they've reached Narendra Station, at least, because that's how you knew to come here initially. But nothing changed on Narendra Station. Like, they didn't have the same bioneural problem. So, it's so safe. there's maybe a safe distance after, you know, after they've been broadcast. But because you're so close to the anomaly, maybe that's why you're experiencing what you are. Well, but if the singularity is growing... Yeah. Can we figure out what that current safe distance is? Um, sort of using this map as a reference, right now, that orange sort of area is the accretion disk. That is about 4 AU. And that red internal area, where if you go into the red, um, you are sucked into the singularity. Um, you are looking at about 1 AU, so roughly about you know Earth distance from the sun. So all things considered, it's a small anomaly, but it has large implications. Captain, I suggest we drop cloak and raise the shields in order to communicate with the Voth. They are not necessarily enemies. How much time would we have to drop back into cloak if they show hostile intention? Like, how much time would we need? Would we have enough time if we reveal ourselves? and they show hostile intent to drop back in a cloak and escape. It will very much depend on how quickly they react. <sighs> Let's open communications. Drop us out of cloak, raise shields. Let's open communications. At this point, let's just try to open diplomatic. Let's talk to them. All right. Before we do this, do we know how they're... Um how well they get along with the undine no i would say that is the one thing that you haven't seen in your reports is how they do get along with the undine you have no idea i would like to go to the ambassador and see if maybe she has any idea if it would even be a wise idea to try this or if she could help keep uh, on friendly terms okay. i like that so you drop by, uh, visit your Undine ambassador. Uh, as a reminder, her name is, since I look it up myself. Oh yeah, Titania. Titania. So you uh, you go to Titania and uh, you ask her, you know, hey, is there anything we can do here to work? And she sort of looks at you funny for a moment and then says, I'm sorry, you've created a, a what? A cryoarithmetic engine? We can talk about this one later. I'm more. What do you know about the Voth? I know that we've only encountered them once and they came out shooting. That is not going to help us. I mean, should I be concerned? Are, are, are there Voth out there? And she sort of points out a window. Yes. Well, um, as a ambassador, I would say that the Undine and probably quite a number of species would be very interested in the singularity. I would hesitate to go so far as to say it might be Starfleet's duty to make sure the Voth don't get it. Oh, boy. I will relay that to the captain. All right. So, Captain, you get that relayed to you. I hate you, by the way. <laughs> this is so hard. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, let's open communications. Commander Tola, let's do Commander Tola. Whatever you can do to protect the, sh the ship, make the modifications to the shield. I want to make sure that we don't have any other major systems affected. If you see anything or have any indication that major systems are being affected, I want to be notified immediately. Um, 
I want to have permission to redirect power from non-essential systems, sir. Permission granted. Do what you need to do to get it done. Um, I want to have Raven prepared at a moment's notice to put us into war. Just like her fingers on the button. Like mm -hmm. I want every single you know safety protocol we can have. Uh, maintain yellow alert and let's open a open a channel to the uh, Voth ships. Alrighty. So uh, let me sneak a peek at a few sheets here. Uh, let's see. So this would be opening a uh, hailing frequency would be a control and engineering assisted by the ship's communications and engineering with a difficulty of zero. And I'm just looking at who we might have on the bridge <laughs> to run I can this. do it. I have pretty good control and engineering. All right, go for it, Captain. I'll open my own channel. <laughs> uh, and I've got, uh, can I use computers? As a focus, um, I'd give it to you, sure. You're a good man. Uh, control and so control. Oh, hold on. Okay, so no help from the ship. So I do control and command. Engineering. Oh, engineering. Sorry, engineering. Submit dice pool two. Mm -hmm. Focus. Yes. Submit. All right. So you get one momentum. The channel is open, Captain. What do you say to the Vaughn? Voth Vessels. This is Captain Frederick O'Connor of the USS Montahari. Um, I'm opening diplomatic relations. We are on a peaceful mission of exploration, wishing to explore this singularity. Um, please state your intentions. Okay. So you send that out, and if I understand correctly, you are coming up out of cloak, you are raising shields, all that. So you send that message as the Matahari sort of phases back into reality and the shields go up. And there's a pause where, you know, you start to wonder, did the Voth get my message kind of a thing? And then you get a single word reply. And that single word is no. And Zonsa reports, sir, they're charging weapons and uh, engaging in intercept course. Of course they are assholes. Um, son of a, I don't really want to fight these guys. I think that would be a bad idea. Um, based on our knowledge, just from what we talked about, uh, Prawl um, and Jaro, we are no match for them. Is that correct? Yes, that's like, our no match. Like that, we would just be destroyed. Correct. Correct. What, yeah. what size are these palisades? Uh, they are scale four, so they're smaller than you. But, um, I mean, it's possible. Everything, I mean, I, let me put it this way. Lore-wise, there should not be an issue of them blowing you up, but I have literally seen an Olympic class in Star Trek Adventures blow up a Romulan Warbird, and the Olympic class doesn't even have photon torpedoes, to put that in perspective. He's trying to convince us to fight them. You're I'm just well, saying. He's, he's just saying that maybe we don't immediately give up. Yeah. All right. Um, power weapons, shields to maximum. Let's red alert. Red alert. Can I push the button? Red alert. Let's do it. The push button the has button. been pushed. Oh no. <laughs> and that's where we're going to take our 10 minute break. So we will be back in 10 minutes. Everybody stick around. <laughs>
All right, and we are back early. Uh, if you're just joining us, the Matahari has discovered a very interesting anomaly, one that defies the laws of all known physics and has already affected a change that in and of itself would be a level of breakthrough akin to warp travel uh, for an emerging species. And the Matahari has sort of encountered Voth around this anomaly. And the Voth are being very, very aggressive. So we are going to drop into actual initiative order here. And we'll say for sake of argument, uh, every bridge officer, you are able to get to your station, whether that's on the bridge, in engineering, et cetera, et cetera. I was already here. Yeah, so you don't have to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. But it is the Matahari's turn to act first. So what is, which one of you would like to act first? I just want to remind everyone, I do have a talent that the first time we want to redeem the initiative, it's it's free. So like, um, mm. we at, at some point, whenever we want to, we can take two turns in a row for free. Mm. I, I think believe the Zonsa captain... has that as well. Yep. So I think the captain said he wanted to try something before we actually get into combat. I wanted to try diplomacy one more time. Um, so I am going to, um, I'm just going to attempt a diplomacy role. Basically, I just want to try and talk to them. Mm -hmm. Voth vessels. Um, you know, we mean we have no hostile intent. Um, I'm sure there's a way that we can talk this out. This is a you know, anomaly that everyone will find interest in. Um, and there's plenty of space for us both to perform our own investigations. Um, you know, please lower your weapons. Let's talk this out. All right. I am going to let you attempt this, but I will say it's going to be very difficult. So this is going to be a presence plus command assisted by the Matahari's communications and command. The right. difficulty on this would normally be a five. However, I would say that this is a special case, and I'll spend threat to do this. This is one of the rare opportunities or rare circumstances where we are going to exceed difficulty five. This is going to be a difficulty six task. <laughs> of course it is. Oh, dear. Oh, man. But if you pull it off, the Voth could potentially stand down. Could be pretty badass, right? Um, mm -hmm. All right, guys. So here's my question. Um, I could spend all our momentum, but we might need that for fighting. <laughs> so, well, you could spend one. You could spend your determination for two free successes if you want to do that right off the bat. I have spirit of discovery. I could spend it to get three free momentum, and I could then use that to get two extra dice. Or would it be better to spend the determination? to just get two two free successes. Because that means I don't only need four yeah. successes then. What do you guys think? I think spending the determination would be better for the two. Wait, wait, wait. You said you can get yourself three free momentum? Yes. I can. I have Spirit of Discovery, which I spend by determination. I get three free momentum. Ah. I would need two extra dice, which give me the potential for up to four successes. So I'd be rolling, you know, four dice. Um, I have pretty good presence in command. Um, like it's going to be pretty good role. You know, I have a good chance of getting some successes, um, and maybe some, some crits, but still it's a difficulty of six. So can anyone assist by chance? Does anyone have anything applicable? Well, the Matahari is assisting you. Oh, Matahari is assisting. Okay. So the Matahari is going to assist. Um, I think you can only be assisted by one. Yes. I believe that is correct. So do I go for two free successes, roll two dice? Ooh, question. Would everybody be cool if I got the two free successes, spent one momentum, three dice? It would be three momentum to get the three dice. Two, uh, two momentum for three dice, and then five momentum for four dice. Uh, so, yes, your determination right. as, an, as a die, die already that rolled a 20. Or rolled so, a one, yes. Yeah. yeah. Or, sorry, a one. <laughs> So let's do this. I'm spending the determination. I've got two successes. Okay. <laughs> this is such a pivotal moment. I'm sorry we're taking so long. We got to deliver no. <laughs> two free successes. So I've got two successes. We need four more successes. Yeah. How many momentum would you guys like me to spend? Or are you okay with me spending? 
I think you should just spend it all. Just spend it all? Sure. I mean, yeah. I'm cool with that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's just spend because, it all. Okay. Yeah, so if you're, you, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, please. I was just saying, if you're successful, we avoid combat. Okay. This could be uh, the first moment in diplomatic relations with the Vok, Voth that don't end in war. Mm -hmm. So this could be a big deal. All mm -hmm. right. So I'm going to do my role is going to be con presence and mm -hmm. command. Mm hmm. And I have so, pre oh, so so presence, so presence and command, and then we're spending three momentum. So I get four dice total. Is that correct? It would be two momentum for three dice total, or three momentum and two threat for four dice total. Let's do that. Okay. And I'll spend that two threat that you've immediately given me to make the complication range at eighteen to twenty. You will because you're a monster and mm -hmm. I love you. That's kind of my job. <laughs> so the uh, ship is rolling comms command, right? Correct. All right, so I get four dice. No help, no help from, the from, the from the ship. Of course not. <laughs> Son of right, a but We start with two. All right, now I have cautious command, so I do get to reroll one die Correct. if I don't like it uh, because I spent a momentum. Mm -hmm. Waiting to push this button for suspense. Everybody hold their breath. Say a prayer to your God. I do have a focus. Yes! <laughs> Let's go! Yes! That is a grand total of eight successes, which means you get two momentum yeah. back. Yeah. And yeah, sure enough, uh, the Voth actually return your call. And appearing on screen is that sort of dinosaur-like head of a Voth, and they say, we're open to suggestions. In the past, our two species have had, I hesitate to say, less than positive interactions. This is a moment where our two organizations, our species, could collaborate on understanding an anomaly. At this point, I believe neither of us understand fully. We don't understand the implications of it, nor do we understand the dangers. Uh, there's a slogan from our, from our homeworld, Earth, my species, human, your homeworld as well, so we can both relate to this, that two heads are better than one. In this situation, we have three heads, three ships, three crews, with an ability that if we collaborate, we can better understand this phenomenon and hopefully use it to better both of our species and our continued survival in this otherwise hostile universe. And of course, it's hard to really read uh, sort of expressions on their interesting sort of alien faces, but you do see almost like a, almost like a grin creep across uh, their mouth. And they say, we are not equipped to handle this anomaly. We were sent to discover why we were detecting tachyons. We will send a research craft this way. Do I have your, do I have an understanding then that um, until further notice, we shall maintain peaceful um, cohabitation of this sector of space? So long as you provide all data relevant to this anomaly and share it freely. I would make the same request to your science vessel as well. That can be arranged. Then we have an agreement. O'Connor out. And then, yeah, uh, we sort of see on the, on the view screen that the Voth Palisades uh, angle and turn around and then jump out to Transwarp. I slink back into my chair and just let out a heavy sigh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, guys. Good job, everybody. Good job. Good job to you, Captain. That was nicely handled. Uh, bring us down to yellow alert. Power the weapons off. Let's start as uh, let's start scans. We'll wait for the Voth, Voth vessel to uh, arrive as well, which will probably be pretty quickly. But let's begin preliminary scans and just start taking in as much data. Um, Jensen, if you could take the uh, take command on this one, just Absolutely. find out what you can. All right. So while Jensen's doing that, we're gonna go to Prawl for a moment. So Prawl, what are you doing during all of this going on? Probably just 
monitoring what's coming from the singularity as well. Okay. And what about you, Jaro? What are you doing while all this is going on? While they're doing research? Yes. Uh, yeah, probably just... Um, I, I'd be keeping tabs on incoming incoming vessels. So I'd be staying on the bridge and just keeping tabs on. Okay. Then uh, let's concentrate our efforts in the CIC for a moment. So uh, Jensen, you're in the science lab. Uh, Prawl, you're probably on the bridge. To lay up, you're in main engineering working on that gel pack. Mm -hmm. uh, so as uh, all of you are currently, you know, sort of monitoring things, uh, walking onto the bridge is your 8472 ambassador, Titania. And she makes a beeline for you, Captain, and says, uh, Captain, I understand we were almost in a confrontation with the Voth. Is everything all right? Should I ask for assistance from my people? We're almost. No, at this point, we've established peaceful diplomatic communication with them. We will be working in tandem with them to investigate this anomaly and gather as much information as we can about it. Roger that. Uh, quick aside before I say anything further, uh, all of you should have access to the handouts now. So if you didn't see them during the break, that's just letting you know now you've got access to those. Um, but Titania sort of nods and says, very well, I see that my presence on the ship has um, borne fruit, as it were. I'm, I'm very interested in this um, cryo-arithmetic engine. Um, would you mind if I sent a message to my kind and let them know what we have discovered? I would encourage you to do so. That would be part of your mission aboard this ship, is to maintain communication with your own species, of course, please. Very well. Uh, and she sort of turns to you, Prawl. Um, Lieutenant Commander Prawl, would you mind if I use the station next to you? Not at all, Ambassador. All right. So uh, Titania moves where uh, Talayup would normally sit, and she begins the process of contacting her people. Now, just so you know, uh, contacting fluidic space means she literally has to use the deflector to open up a small quantum singularity. So as long as you're okay with that, she'll go ahead with the process. Is that going to put our ship in any danger from the yeah. tachyon pulses? Well, conceivably, it could if, you know, a tachyon hit it the wrong way, but what are the odds of that? <laughs> yeah, the, the point zero zero whatever? Mm -hmm. No. I don't know how much threat you got. <laughs> well, no. it was going to be spent in combat, so now i got to find a new use for it. So... <laughs> you don't <Ooh>. have to. <laughs> You're be nice to us for once. <laughs> it's always a choice. <laughs> There's always a choice. Yeah, that's good. Uh, let's just let her do it. Why not? Do it. <laughs> All right. So uh, what happens is she sends the message, and of course the deflector opens up a tiny tear into fluidic space and sends the message. And after, you know, conversing with her uh, people for a moment, she closes the singularity and says, well, Captain, I have good news and bad news. Which would you like first? The bad news? The bad news is that this has caused a bit of a stir among my people. I don't know why that's bad news. Please elaborate. Well... You may or may not know that my people, when I say my people, I mean our faction of the Undine. You know, we, we call ourselves the groundskeepers. We are in an alliance with Starfleet, of course. In order to communicate with my people, I have to broadcast openly into fluidic space, meaning the other Undine have heard of what has happened here. And let's just say that... There's discussion of how to deal with that among the other Undine. I have a question for you. I might have an answer. Before you asked me if you could contact Fluidic Space, you failed to mention that all of the factions would be aware of this communication. Do you not perhaps think that this knowledge would have been something you should have shared with me prior to sending that message? I would have thought that that would have been included in your captain's briefing, sir. With all due respect. With all due respect, I still feel that's something you should have brought to my attention. At this point, what's done is done. Let's go on to the good news. 
The good news is that the groundskeepers are already mobilizing their best and brightest. They are sending not only the USS, sorry, not the USS, the GV Troust to check things out, but they are also sending several ships to aid in the construction of what is essentially a star base in this area. Very good. I would like to send a long range transmission to Starfleet uh, via Narinder Station being probably the closest station to our location. I would like to inform the Admiral of what we've discovered and make sure that, you know, we're following all proper diplomatic, um, you know, protocols for this unprecedented discovery. Mm -hmm. um, also, I would like to maintain an open communication towards any Voth ships. At this point, we did only agreed that we and them would be interacting. I did not make any mention of the Undine, so I don't want this to be seen as a hostile interaction. Um, if you could do me a favor and hold off on any of your ships uh, coming to this area before I've had a chance to communicate with them, I want to make sure that we don't unnecessarily or unintentionally create a, you know, what looks like we're trying to, you know, be hostile towards them. This is a very tense situation. Indeed it is. And I do apologize for my oversight. I perhaps should have briefed you beforehand. I, I, I'm not the hologram captain. So yeah, they're just consider that I don't know as much as maybe he did. If that's all right. I make an awkward chuckle. And she, and she, she oh, go ahead, Jaro. And I said, I don't mean to be impertinent, but if the other factions of your people decided that this was something that was too valuable to be left in our hands or the bots hands, what would they, what would they do? Probably send a planet killer to blow up the anomaly. Assuming that would even work, but honestly, I'm not a tactical person. I couldn't tell you if a planet killer's weapon could even touch this thing. So we, we may have just accidentally invited an assault on this, uh, this anomaly and possibly by extension us. It does seem that way, yes, which makes me look extremely foolish. What's done is done. Let's make proper uh, preparation. I'd like to, um, our message to Starfleet Command, I would like to request additional science vessels to come help us explore this anomaly. Um, and then I'd like to set up like a perimeter uh, with some with some buoys, you know, basically communications buoys. Mm -hmm. uh, Tolep, um, if you could get to work on modifying um, some uh, some of our probes to act as buoys, or if we have buoys on board, I'd like to set up like a perimeter around this. Um, and I want as soon as we can, um, prawl, not prawl. Um, is, is this a priority over and above the study of the bioneural gel pack, sir? Uh, that is secondary to the bioneural gel pack. I want to get that done first, but something just to get done as soon as you can. And then Jensen, like I'd like you to do as much research as you can. I want to know what the safe distance is. So as soon as you know what the safe distance is, then Tolep can begin work on the buoys because I want you know ships passing by, you know, to know this is the minimum safe distance from this anomaly. All right. Hi, sir. So, Captain, uh, just as a sort of out of character question, when you call back to Narendra Station, would you be doing it from your position on the bridge? Or would you take it in your office? At this point, just from the bridge, I mean, unless the Admiral asks me to have a private conversation, I see no reason for the rest of the crew not to understand what's being discussed. We're all in this together. All right. So appearing above the hollow table when you open communication back to Narendra Station is the uh, midnight-hued Admiral Hormasi. And she says, Captain, we don't often get priority one communications like this. What can I assist you with? I'm just going to fill her in just on everything that's transpired. Uh, I will ask for any suggestions she has, but then let her know what our current plan is. I'm also going to let her know of the mix up we had with the Undine, that there may be a possible conflict. And then I'm going to request some additional aid um, in the form of, you know, some additional science vessels and maybe even just one tactical vessel, just so we have some presence in the system. I have no idea if the Voth will come back with like full force. Mm -hmm. 
So, you know, I'm going to take off glasses to do this facial motion, but she literally does the double Picard face palm where she like rubs her face and eyes and just goes, <sighs> okay, so let me make sure I understand you correctly. Not only have you discovered a tachyon black hole, but you've also managed to inadvertently stumble upon something that could revolutionize computers tremendously. And the Undine might not be happy with it, but the Voth are? Yes. Well, Captain, I... All right, hold on. Um, And she mutes herself for a second, and you see her shouting something off screen. And she un- turns back and unmutes herself. Right. Um, We're going to be diverting pretty much every ship in the Shackleton Expanse to help guard this thing. Literally every ship with a phaser array. This is an unprecedented opportunity for us to perhaps engage in diplomatic relations with the Voth. So I want to make sure we don't go overboard here, and I'm not telling you how to run your run run the fleet, of course, but I would just let's I would I would encourage caution. You know my record, you know I've been in Starfleet for many years. This is an opportunity, so let's not my suggestion is let's not go overboard, but as always, I defer to your your better judgment. Coming from anyone else, Captain, I might have seen that as a slight, but I understand your record. I understand where you're coming from. We're not sending all the ships there to really show that we own the anomaly. We're sending them to make sure that if the Undine that you've detailed decide to make a move on the anomaly, or if the Voth decide to come back with a city ship, we're ready for it. I support this fully. Thank you for your understanding and your respect. Very good. And um, Captain... I do not envy your new position. Not only have you found something remarkable, you are more than likely going to revolutionize many things that Starfleet has known for years, decades, centuries. I suggest you get a speech going along with the rest of your crew. I want to be very clear that it's not me that is going to revolutionize everything. It is the entire crew aboard the Matahari that will take the forefront on revolutionizing everything. I refuse to take the spotlight. It's the actions of my entire crew at the, up to this point that have led us to this discovery, and each of them will have a chance to um, explain what's, what's transpired. Well, then I suggest they all get to writing speeches, because Lord knows the moment the Daystrom Institute finds out about this, you're not going to know peace for probably years. Understood. Thank you, Admiral. And then the Admiral cuts out. Now that I have a detailed scan of the bioneural gel pack, can I quarantine a replicator and see if I can make another one? Yeah, and in fact, you can. You can quite literally duplicate a new cryorhythmatic gel pack. What? So, uh, to, lay up, to lay up to Captain. This is the Captain. Uh, I may not know how we uh, ended up with the cryorhythmatic uh bioneural gel pack, but I, I can report that I am able to replicate it. So we could we could seriously upgrade our systems in the time it takes for the Voth and the Undine to bring their vessels to bear. I would like you to begin work on the possibility of that happening. I don't want you to begin replacing systems yet until we better understand these com- these computers, but I want you to work closely with um, our science officer. Um, and I want you to, and actually Jaro, if you wouldn't mind taking command and just guiding, just, just maintain a presence on this. Also just the entire senior staff I want you guys to begin working on potential speeches, by the way. Hopefully you all don't mind, but this is an unprecedented discovery that is going to change the entire understanding within Starfleet and perhaps the entire galaxy of how physics works. We're going to be at the forefront of it. This is our discovery. I want to be very clear that this is our discovery. We will each have a chance to provide feedback, but this is going to not only change Starfleet, but it's going to change our lives likely forever. 
So just be prepared for the spotlight. And if you're not familiar with it, it can be somewhat daunting. And if any of you have any concerns about that spotlight, I'd like you to request to meet with me privately and I can walk you through it. Um, but get excited. This is, this is life-changing. Well, from hapless oaths to, uh, to heroes, huh? <laughs> Sometimes that's how it happens. <laughs> Uh, Jensen, to lay up, I think I'm going to need to ask you to please explain this to me like I'm a six-year-old before, uh, before I give any speeches about it. <laughs> Aye, sir, can do. Absolutely. All right. Well, Captain. honestly, um, I think, you know, I, I was expecting you guys to be in combat, so... <laughs> I'm out of material for the night. I mean, we can keep going, but this is pure improv technology from now on. So I've got something right now. Go for it, Paul. What you got? Captain, can I speak to you in the ready room? Absolutely. Um, I've got a big grin on my face. Like, I look excited. He usually tries to maintain some level of composure, but he's, like, actively excited. So, yeah, this is going to be cool. But please, meet me in the ready room. All right. So, Captain and Prawl, you step into the ready room and take it away. Not to put a damper on the festivities that are about to be starting, but I hope you realize I need to send a report directly to Starfleet Intelligence about this. I would be surprised if you didn't. And depending on how they react, what we do may drastically change. I'm going to ask you something and I need you to be 100% honest with me. Yes, sir. I read about what transpired with Moriarty in your report. Yes. And while I did not disagree with your actions and it was well within your right to do so, I would ask that before you make any decisions based on what you hear back from Starfleet intelligence, you speak with me about it. Now, in no way do I believe that I will be able to or would I attempt to necessarily stop whatever your actions are, but I would like to know in advance. Based on my understanding of Starfleet intelligence and the commanders of that branch of our organization, I believe they will want to know as much as they can about this anomaly. And I think that our desires and our missions will likely align. If they don't, all I ask is that you tell me. Mutual respect aboard this ship and an understanding that we're all in this together is the only way this crew will survive. Do I have your understanding and your agreement to that? Yes, sir. I understand if what I am told differs from what I believe your mission, the mission of this ship, our mission is to be, I will tell you beforehand. I hope it doesn't come to that but you do understand i am a member of starfleet intelligence simply posted aboard this vessel fully and i extend my hand to shake yours or reach out and shake firm grip i'm glad you're here your insight into the vox your insight into emotions aboard this ship has been invaluable and no matter what transpires you will always have my respect I appreciate that, sir. What good is an intelligence ship without an intelligence officer? <laughs> very, very little, if I may be so bold as to say. Very little. Um, I'd like you to begin that communication as soon as you can. I'd like to know what their thoughts are as, as, as soon as possible. I'll have that written up before the end of my duty shift. Very good. If right. there's anything else... I'll head back to my office and get that started. You're dismissed. Uh, to just also begin work on your speech. Let's let's be assumptive that it'll be a positive outcome from your communications with them. Do I really have to do one? No, <laughs> but I'd like if you did. It's up to you. Uh, I'll give you a little pat on the shoulder. Ah, you old hound dog. Get out of here. <laughs> oh, my parents will never let me hear the end of this one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh so I'm going to reveal, unless anyone had in another scene, I'm going to sort of reveal how events plan out here. Because um, this is sort of the end of your first arc and how your second arc is going to proceed. 
Um, so what's going to happen is there's going to be a time skip between this game and our next game. And in that time, a few things are going to happen. Um, the first and probably most important is this is going to be a new starbase being formed here. A new starbase will be laid down here, and it will be the very first Federation Undine starbase. Well. Now, of course, we're going to explore that starbase next time. But that's the major thing. So obviously, new Starbase going down, collaborative effort, huge deal. The next thing is that while the technology that you found, the, the cryorhythmatic engine, while that isn't going to go out to the rest of the fleet quite yet, it's basically going to be something where I'm going to allow you guys to think offline about how you can apply that to the Matahari. Because you can do whatever you want to the Matahari, but you can't apply that to the rest of Starfleet. You can't just go, oh, everybody start replicating these kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. um, so you guys are actually going to become sort of a test bed for this technology. Um, also, in terms of missions you guys are going to go on, let's just say Starfleet's going to be very possessive of where the Matahari goes for a little bit. So just be aware of that. <laughs> um, other good news, um, the relations with the Voth will improve. Now, they're not going to, you know, you're not going to go up to exalted reputation to borrow a World of Warcraft term. You're going to mm -hmm. go up to maybe friendly if if we're using World of Warcraft. You're going to go up to friendly. <laughs> I did that. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Uh, honestly, good. like I said, that difficulty six roll was pivotal. And I want to commend you guys for that. It was it was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. What did what did you guys think? Uh, was that? That was, awesome. uh, that was great. This was. Yeah. It was good. I had spent a bunch of time like looking up all the combat com uh, the combat rules, and I was like, "Oh, good. I don't need this at all." Yeah, I, I just started brought up my reference sheet. I was like, "Okay, what can I do that's useful?" Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to commend everyone tonight. I thought I thought the two groups, um, both the first officer intelligence, working together. I really liked to see the engineering and science officer work together. Like your two different scenes, like if you guys collabor collaborating was really cool. I loved. It like showed some like dynamics and some growth amongst the crew a little bit. Like feels like we're starting to congeal a little bit better too, which was really cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And no, I, I really did. I want to give props for that uh, Jaro and Prawl scene because there was that Bajoran Cardassian thing where you guys were butting heads for the longest time. So it was cool to see some growth there. Yeah. Yeah. Get it out. Put it on the table. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. All right. Well, that is where I'm going to stop the stream. So Twitch, YouTube, thank you so much for tuning in. And you'll see some of these cameos on uh, other shows. But see you later, stream. Have a good one.